right, it's that time of year. Christmas is getting close, and people are getting in the mood for Christmas treats. And I got four classic staples right here. I've got my gingerbread cookies, my ginger snaps, my apple cider, and my eggnog. All done healthy vegan style. No oil, no wheat, no refined sugar. And today, I'm going to show you how to make So the first recipe we're gonna do are our ginger snap cookies. Now, some of you may be wondering, why am I doing gingerbread cookies and ginger snap cookies? And the answer is simple. I had a lot of requests for both, and I didn't wanna make one and not make the other because people had their hearts set on both. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do them both. Now let's talk about first what we're gonna use to make our ginger snap cookies. Um, we're gonna use some oat flour, some almond flour, some date paste and some date sugar. Now date sugar, um, I don't use that often, but I'm gonna start using it more instead of date syrup. Date sugar is excellent. This is organic dehydrated dates. That's all it is. The fiber is still there, uh, which helps so you don't absorb the sugar as quickly. So this is essentially this, just in a dry form. So date paste, date sugar are what we're gonna use. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get my ground flax and water mixed into a flax egg, and then I'm gonna set it aside. Okay, so now that I've mixed my flax egg and set it aside, I'm gonna take my wet ingredients and mix them and get them uh, blended together here. Okay, so now the next step is I'm gonna take my nut butter and my date paste, and I'm gonna get them combined and mix them together until they're really nice and smooth. Okay, and now I'm gonna mix my flax egg into the wet ingredients and mix it really well. Now for the dry ingredients. So typically in a gingerbread cookie recipe, you're gonna see molasses, but I'm using dates and dates only because they get the job done and they're the healthiest. Okay, so now I've got all my dry ingredients and my wet ingredients mixed separately. Now it's time to combine them. So I do want to let you know that this dough may be a little stickier than your typical cookie dough. So prepare to get your hands messy. Now once you get it mixed really well, you should form it into a nice soft ball of dough. Okay, so now I'm going to get my um, going to get my dough rolled out here. And to do that, I'm going to use parchment paper. I'm going to use a sheet on the bottom and then I'm going to use a sheet of parchment paper over top. A lot of you have probably seen me do this already with recipes I've already done, but it just keeps it from sticking and makes the whole process of getting it rolled out a lot easier. So let's do that. So I decided to roll out my dough and then use a cookie cutter, but you can also make them into individual balls and then flatten them into cookies that way if you prefer. Okay, so now I've got my dough rolled out. Now it's just a matter of cutting them into cookies and getting them in our baking sheet. So I rolled my dough out into about an eighth of an inch thick. Now, remember, the thicker that you make your dough, the longer it's gonna take your cookies to get crisp. So I like to make mine thin. Now, when using a cookie cutter to cut your cookies, you're gonna have some extra dough left over. And what you can do is just take this dough and re-roll it like I'm doing here and just cut more and more cookies. Okay, and now I've got all my cookies cut. I've got them placed in the pan. And now it's time to get them in the oven and then we'll start on our gingerbread cookies. All right, so we've got our ginger snaps in the oven. Now we're gonna turn our attention to our gingerbread cookies. Now, obviously the ingredients are gonna be very similar because it's pretty much the same cookie. If you think about it though, with the ginger snaps, I was using primarily oat flour with a little bit of almond flour. Here, I'm just using almond flour. Now, the rationale behind that is that when I was making the ginger snaps, I used the oat flour because it has less fat and we wanted a cookie that ends up being nice and crispy. So with less fat, you're gonna get that. Here, because we wanted to be soft, chewy, moist, we're gonna use almond flour, increase the fat content a little bit, leave out the oat flour, and this should make it perfect. So we're gonna use our almond flour. We're gonna use some ginger, of course, some vanilla. This is some cinnamon. Um, we've got some um, almond butter, some uh, flax and water. I'm gonna combine these just as I did with the ginger snaps and make a flax egg, and then we have some date paste. So these are things we're gonna combine and get our gingerbread cookies going. Let's do it. All right, once again, I'm gonna combine my wet ingredients. 
So since we just made ginger snaps and these are gingerbread cookies, the ingredients and the process are gonna be very similar. So it should be really easy to make these. We're just gonna do the same thing by combining our dry ingredients together separately from our wet and then combining our wet ingredients and getting the two together and mixed into a nice soft ball of dough. And then we'll go from there. If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe below. Okay, now for the fun part. We've got all the work done, now we're just gonna scoop and put them on the pan and then get them in the oven. So if you've seen any of my other videos when I make cookies, then you know that I prefer to use a scoop to make things nice and uniform and even. But you can also roll this dough out into a quarter or a half an inch thick and then cut them with a cookie cutter just like we did the ginger snaps. Now if you choose to roll this dough out, it's best to use two pieces of parchment paper to keep it from sticking and make the process easier. And now I'm just going to flatten them out and get them ready for the oven. Okay, so I've got my cookies all formed and pressed. Now I'm going to put them in the oven and get them baking. Okay, so now we've got our ginger snaps and our gingerbread cookies made. I set those aside for a minute. Now we're going to turn our attention to another Christmas treat, which is apple cider. Now, of course, we're going to make it fresh, healthy, vegan style. So what we're going to use are some uh, Granny Smith apples. If you watch my videos, you know that when I juice, I typically use Granny Smith apples because they have the least amount of sugar of all apples. On that note, though, some people like a really sweet cider, and if you're one of those people, you could use a red apple or any apple of your choice to add a little more sugar. You could even add some date sugar um, if you just really want a sweeter cider. But for me, um, Granny Smith's will suffice. That's what I'm going to use to sweeten these. I'm going to use some fresh organic cranberries. I'm going to use some fresh cloves, a stick of cinnamon, and a little bit of ginger. I'm going to put them together through the juicer. Then we're actually going to heat this up because what we want is hot cider. Let's do it. Okay, so there's nothing complicated here. You just break out your juicer and run these um, ingredients through to make your cider. And then once we get it juiced, we'll turn to the next step, which is getting it nice and hot. Okay, so now I've got my, um, my juice in my container. Now I'm gonna take my cinnamon and my cloves and I put a little bit of water in the pot. And all I want to do now is simmer these so that they start to release their flavors. If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe below. All right, so we finished all of our other Christmas treats. The last thing we're going to do is this healthy vegan eggnog. And I'm telling you, you won't believe how easy it is. And the taste is spot on, trust me. What we're going to use to make this is some plant milk. Now I'm using walnut milk, but you could use any plant milk of your choice. I'm using some organic cashews. I'm using some cinnamon, some nutmeg, some turmeric, some vanilla. And of course, surprise, surprise, we're going to sweeten this with dates. Let's throw it together and get it done. Now, if you've never made vegan eggnog, it may surprise you that you can make it with plant milk and nuts like this, but you absolutely can. And trust me, it's delicious. Now, real eggnog is full of fat and so is this drink, but man, is it good. All right, so I've got my gingerbread cookies out of the oven now. And what I'm doing right now is really optional, but what I did is I made up a little bit of icing. I'm gonna dip each cookie in the icing just to give a little more sweetness. Now for me, these are plenty sweet enough, so this is totally optional and you don't have to do it, but I'm gonna do it because it also makes a little better presentation too. So let's do that now. So after I finish dipping my gingerbread cookies, I'll get my other three treats together, and there you have it, four delicious staple Christmas treats to enjoy. All right, so all four of our Christmas treats are done. We've got our gingerbread cookies, our ginger snaps, and both of our drinks. And remember, all these treats were made with no oil, no wheat, no refined sugar. We didn't compromise taste because I've had them all before and they're absolutely delicious. Thanks for watching. I hope you make these recipes and happy holidays. So if you're new to my channel and you're wondering how to find the recipes to the cooking shows like the one you just watched, look below the video and tap on the word more. 
and then you'll see the beginning of the recipe. Tap on the word more a second time and you'll see the full recipe and then you can begin to make your own. Thanks for watching.